Previously with the normal distribution, we've used the empirical rule to estimate the area between one, two, and three standard deviations from the mean. Today we're going to look at how we can find the amount of area under the standard normal distribution for any other value of z. So our objective is to calculate the area underneath the standard normal distribution. So first, what is the standard normal distribution? There's a picture of it here on the bottom right. Two qualities of the standard normal distribution. First, the mean is always 0, putting the center right at 0 so that negatives are below the mean and positive values mean we're above the mean. Also, the standard normal has a standard deviation of 1 unit. The standard normal distribution is used so often that we have some specific calculations we can do to calculate the areas or probabilities underneath. But first, let's talk about how we can find what's called a standard score, how we change any normal situation into a standard normal situation. We've already talked about this z-score. z is equal to the value we're interested in minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And if we want to convert back the other direction, we can take our standard score to get our normal situation, which is x equals the number of standard deviations times the standard deviation plus the mean. Remember, if we're to the left of the mean, z will be negative, And if we're to the right of the mean, z will be positive. So let's take a look at an example where we do just that. We have a pizza parlor that has an average amount of cheese on a large pizza being 8 ounces and the standard deviation of 0.5 ounces. We want to know how many standard deviations from the mean is a pizza that has 6.9 ounces of cheese. Well, we can do this using our standard normal z-score formula. So z is equal to the value we're interested in, the 6.9, minus the mean, 8, divided by the standard deviation of 0.5. We can do this on our calculator, and I highly recommend you do this in two steps on your calculator. First, 6.9 minus the 8 to get negative 1.1, and then divide by the 0.5. That'll give us negative 2.2, meaning we're 2.2 standard deviations to the left of the mean. What if I have a cheese pizza that's three standard deviations below the mean? How much cheese is that? Well, now we're looking for the x value that has context in our situation. x is equal to the number of standard deviations, 3, and we're below the mean, so it's negative, times the standard deviation, which is 0.5, plus the mean, which is 8. And when we do that in our calculator, we end up with 6.5 ounces of cheese being three standard deviations below the mean. Now, once we have a z-score, we can figure out the area that corresponds with that z-score underneath the standard normal. And that's important because the area under the curve is the same thing as the probability that event will occur. Our textbook has some instructions for how to use a table to find the area under the curve, but we will use Excel in this video. Excel has a nice feature that is equals norm dot s for standard dot dist for standard normal distribution. Then we'll put in the z-score, and we'll type the word true afterwards. For our purposes, it will always be true. This will give us the area to the left of the z-value. And then we can draw a picture to build the answer depending on which piece we're looking for. Let's take a look at what I mean by that. If I want the probability that the z-score is less than 1.3, we think about the standard normal curve, the mean of 0 is in the middle, which means 1.3 is off to the right. We want to be less than 1.3. This time, we want the area to the left. That's nice, because Excel will give us the area to the left of the point. So we want the probability that z is less than 1.3. We'll type in equals norm dot s for standard distribution, type in the z value of 1.3, and we'll always say true for our purposes. 
When we do, we get 0 0.9032. That means the area to the left is 0 0.9032. And that shaded area is the area we want, so that must be my probability that the z value is less than 1.3. What if I want to be greater than a value? Again, we'll draw a picture so we can get an idea of what we're talking about. There's our standard normal curve with 0 in the center. 0.4 is to the right of it. But this time, we want z to be greater than 0.4. So we want the other half. We'll still use Excel in much the similar way. So let's hop over to Excel. We want the probability that z is greater than 0 0.4. First, we'll hit equals norm.s for standard dot distribution. The z value is 0 0.4. And for cumulative, we will say true. And this is going to give us 0.65. Let's round to four digits. 0.6554. We get 0.6554. But remember, that is always the area to the left. The shaded area, what we're looking for, is the area to the right. Well, to help us find that piece, we know the total area, the total probability is 1. Our complement rule says we can subtract the complement, which we know is 0.6554, to get the probability we want of 0.3446. And that's going to be the probability that we're greater than 0.4, or off to the right. What if I want the probability my z value is between two numbers? So now we've got our normal curve with 0 in the middle. I'm going to use red to represent the negative 1.2. And I'll use green to represent the negative 0.3. We want the area in between them. So let's see what happens when we look up those values. First, if z is equal to negative 1.2, we can say equals norm.s.distribution. The z value is negative 1.2, true. We get an area of 0.1151. So we have 0.1151 is the area to the left. That's not the area we want. That's just the area to the left of negative 1.2. What about the negative 0.3? If z is negative 0.3, we can say equals norm.s.distribution. Negative 0.3 comma true. And that's going to give us an area of 0.38 to 1. 0.3821 is the area not just in the blue, but all the way across. So notice that 0.3821 has that extra red tail attached to it. We want just the blue area, so we're going to cut out or subtract the red number. So we'll take 0.3821 and we'll subtract 0.1151 to get our total area. Our total area is 0.267. So there's almost a 27% chance that our z value will fall between negative 1.2 and negative 0.3. This is how we can use a picture and Excel together, always use both together, to find the piece, the probability, the area that we're looking for. So hopefully this video is useful to you as you calculate areas under the standard normal distribution. Practice a few of these, and good luck to you.